Hello, my darlings. This is Maria and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, triple welcome, double welcome, triple welcome. Please subscribe. Um, this is a channel about spirituality, all things consciousness. We discuss a variety of different esoteric topics. So welcome, the more the merrier. Today, we're going to talk about spirit guides. Uh, this is not going to be the basic episode. If you want me to make an episode about how to connect with your spirit guides, please leave me a comment below. This is spirit guides 2.0 type of episode. Today, this is Essentially, we're going to talk about how to get the most out of your relationship with your spirit guides. So this is not for somebody that uh, doesn't know their spirit guides, is not able to effectively communicate with their spirit guides. This is for somebody who has a group of spirit guides they already are working with, understands, kind of like knows their ins and outs, is able to get really clear messages um, and, and really clear guidance. And um, my intention here is to take that to the next level because there is always layers there are always layers around how much we can communicate with spirit how much we can get out of our communication with spirit in our daily lives and so today we're going to be talking about boons and favors boons and favors that you can get from your spirit guides this is not a novel concept this is something that in in, in hindu religion for instance is talked about quite significantly um, the concept of boons and favors, though, is not really discussed all that widely in spirituality. And so I figured, why not shift this? So all of you, obviously, um, because it's not a basic episode, um, each of you has quite a number of spirit guides. I find that we usually have our primary guides, then we have our secondary guides, and then we have our tertiary guides. Our primary guides are the ones that talk to us all the time or communicate with us all the time. Um, usually, although there is an exception to every rule, there are about five to 10 major spirit guides that you would have or primary spirit guides. Very often, they would stay quite consistent throughout your whole incarnation. Uh, there may be some exceptions, but very often your primary guides are going to stay fairly consistent. Then you have a group of your secondary guides. Your secondary guides are maybe not your best friends, but they're your really, really good friends. Secondary guides may be forever or may not be forever. For instance, you may have a sacred contract with one of your spirit guides around helping you through a particular period in your life that may be charged or draining or just like a very particular period of your life or taking you through a particular challenge. And once that challenge is successfully overcome, the spirit guide just goes away and disappears. For instance, I don't know, uh, you may have a spirit guide that would take you through pregnancy if, if you're a female, or that would take you through college or something along those lines, and then they would disappear. Very often, um, these types of relationships are the ones where either a lot of psychological and mental or emotional help is needed, or a particular message or learning needs to be passed on to you. So once that learning, once that knowledge is passed on to you successfully, then the spirit guide kind of just moves moves away, making room for another secondary guide that can come and go. So these are your kind of like transient friends. They're not supposed to be forever friends. And then they are tertiary friends or your tertiary spirit guides. And your tertiary spirit guides are not always going to be going to make themselves known as in they're not always going to be there, but you can reach out to them proactively, right? So it's push versus pull, if that makes sense, right? So your primary and your secondary spirit guides would often just come into your vicinity and be very proactive about helping you, whereas your tertiary spirit guides, you're going to have to proactively reach out and knock on their door and be like, hey, can you help me with this or that or the other? The reason I'm giving you all this is just to provide maybe a little bit more context and maybe a little bit more depth because this next topic or the, really the, the subject of today's conversation, boons and favors, is directly correlated to how well you understand the hierarchy of your own spirit guides and your own spirit family. As we're going through our human experience here, a third dimensional planet on planet Earth, naturally there are the ebbs and flows, there are challenges, there are things that are happening to us. Now, we can choose to take it upon ourselves and just say, hey, listen, you know, we're strong enough as humans and, you know, we can go at it alone. Or we can actively reach out for assistance to our spirit guides. Now there is structured assistance and then there is unstructured assistance that our spirit guides can give us. Now, maybe let me take a step back and, and, and just create one quick disclaimer. You also have your guardian 
angel. Usually one, although I've seen up to seven guardian angels. There is one main one that's usually behind your left shoulder. That guide kind of has already committed, like they have a sacred contract to help you out no matter what. What I am referring to around boons and favors, we're going to be working with the rest of your spirit guides. Now, like I said, there's structured help and unstructured help. Here's what I mean by that. Unstructured help is help rendered to you by a spirit guide of yours in the moment where it has not necessarily been asked for and it, there are no strings attached. I don't know. Let's say you're grappling with a problem and you really don't know what the answer is. And the spirit guide proactively comes into your consciousness to tell you, listen, this is the answer. And you know that's a spirit guide and not intuition because your spirit guides, over time, you really get to differentiate where it's you talking versus your spirit guide. That would be an example of unstructured, almost like unsolicited help. Very often, your primary and secondary guides would reach out to you with things like that that are unstructured in the moment guidance. And then there's structured guidance. Structured guidance is something that is in the realm of favors and booms very, very often. By the way, so structured guidance is essentially a sacred contract that you get to enter and that you get to create being in the physical body with one of your spirit guides, one or many of your spirit guides. Why would you do that? If you need assistance with something in particular and one of your spirit guides just naturally happens to be a pro at that one thing, then it may be wise for you to ask for a favor and the spirit guide may offer that in a form of a boon. And there's usually an energetic exchange that takes place. So in other words, if you're asking for a favor and it's a structured contract, especially if it's a prolonged favor or something that's big that you need assistance with, very often you're not just going to get it for nothing. There is the give and take. And uh, that is where the contract is created. What are the things that your spirit guides can help you with? Really, I mean, the world's your oyster. There's so much. They can help transfer a particular skill to you, help you um, master a skill faster, for instance, like learning a language. They um, may enable you to make better decisions. Uh, for instance, if one of your spirit guides is really good, like let's say one of their qualities is wisdom, one of the things that they can impart on you as a favor is the ability for you to always make the right kind of decision. I don't know, you may uh, ask... Uh, your guides to ensure that you're as lucky as you can be. So luck is is there for you. They may ensure that they may help you attract wealth. They may help you attract romance uh, or a perfect romantic partner. There's really a wide range of things that your spirit guides can help you with. Now, does it mean that it's going to be instantaneous? It depends on the boon, actually, it depends on the favor. Very often it is not instantaneous, but kind of like, a, you know, help over time or like help in achieving a particular milestone or particular goal around your business or around your life or what have you, right? There is still, in other words, this is a third dimensional reality. So things still take time to manifest. However, as you're talking through your spirit with your spirit guides and discussing the favor, they're going to be able to tell you how much quicker they can make things happen for you. I'll, I'll give you a quick example. Uh, well, maybe like let's let's take a step back and and um, first things first. So, how would you go about just determining the favor, or how how would you even know what your spirit guides can help you with? Because you may need one thing, but your spirit guides may not have that as a skill set. For instance, you may want to become, you may want to be in academia and become a scientist, but all of your spirit guides are artists. And then you can be like, hey, can you help me become a scientist? But your spirit guides are artists. And so they're going to be like tough luck, right? So unfortunately, our spirit guides, and that's like a, probably a really, really big misconception, they're not masterful at everything equally. Just like you are not the master of all things. They have their skill sets, they have their propensities, they have their attributes. Think of deities. Um, deity is actually a really, really good, a really good proxy for a spirit guide. Athena, for instance, you can go to Athena for wisdom, but you're not necessarily going to go to Athena, uh, the Greek goddess, for beauty or youth. Uh, for beauty and youth, you would go to, go to Aphrodite. You would not necessarily go to Zeus if you're looking for 
a sly, I, I don't know, or like a, I don't know, like a way to get, um, to get out of um, an argument unscathed, for instance, because that is more like Loki world, but you may go to Zeus for strength. Do you know what I mean? Like essentially every deity, every spirit guide, they have their strength. They have their own propensities. They have their own attributes. And then there are other things that are not their core competency, not their core attributes. So when you're working with your spirit guides, you need to understand that if you want to get what you want, you're, you're going to be looking for alignment between what it is that you want and what your spirit guides can deliver. So let me give you just a couple of hacks, right? First things first, every time that you ask for a boon for a favor, it is a sacred contract. What does that mean? That means that you can go essentially in, to anybody, and I mean anybody in the universe, and create a sacred contract to try to get what you want out of them. But you're going to have to pay. As far as spirit world is concerned, there are always going to be spirits that are more favorable to you. And then there are going to be spirits that don't care or neutral to you. And then there are going to be spirits that don't like you all that much. Just like relationships. It is what it is. We have our, you know, inner family, inner circle, and then these concentric circles go out from there. Not everybody's our friend here on earth. Not everybody is our friend here. You know, they're upstairs, if you will. And so the first thing that you would want to do is A, understand who your main spirit guides are if you don't already, and understand what their strengths are. The best way to do that is by asking them. Literally, you would be like primary guides, you would list their names, and you would be like, these are the three to five things that each of them is really, really good at. And that, that you know, that's how you have a reference point. That's the quickest place to start. The second thing that I would do is this. There's always somebody in the universe that owes you a favor. So um, when I started working with energy of boons and favors, the first thing that I asked the universe was this, show me who already owes me energetically, who's really strong right now, works with energies of the planet Earth, who it would be wise for me to enter into a sacred contract with. Because you can also do the quid pro quo. So essentially, if somebody already owes you a favor, entering into a sacred contract with them, you can just tell them, hey, I'll take a favor for a favor, you know? I want this from you and you're not going to owe me another favor. This is it. Essentially, I'm just, this is payback time. I'm calling, uh, I'm calling in my, my winnings from previous lives. So this is probably the best way to enter into a contract because you get the benefit, but you don't get the, you don't have to pay essentially because it has already been paid for. Second, best sacred contract, because we're optimizing here. This is like getting a boon and a favor is a game of optimization. The next thing that you are going to want to do is figure out who are the spirit guides that love you the most. Because those are always going to be the most lenient for you. Anytime you enter into a sacred contract and ask for a favor, the other party is going to ask you for payment. They're the ones that call in what that payment is. For instance, you may tell them, hey, I want you to help me to buy a house. Let's say that that is your big, big fat dream, big, amazing dream. Um, and that's what you would like help with. The spirit guy that you, is committing to helping you. By the way, first you have to make sure that getting your material possession like a house is even in their wheelhouse. Because if it is not, it's not worth it. Find a spirit guy that can help you with for whom material wealth is something that is a strength. Uh, I don't know, like a Lakshmi, for instance, right? For, for her, wealth is a strength. For somebody else, it may not be. But uh, you always want to find the spirit guides that are most favorable to you. Very often, they're going to be in your primary or secondary spirit guide arenas. Why is that? If a spirit is your friend, they're going to be most likely to give you payment or to ask for payment that is very easy for you to accomplish. By the way, like every sacred, sacred contract, if the payment that they're asking for is not up to your liking, or you think it's too much, you don't have to enter into a contract because it's not binding until it has been sealed. Um, and so what are some of the examples of payments? They can ask you to take on an ascesis, for instance. An ascesis is essentially an act of giving something up for a temp or like a period of time, like a favorite food or a drink. And they would specify the amount of time and what, what is the one thing they have to give up. And that's going to be a payment. They may ask you to give them an offering and the offering may be ongoing or just one time. 
They may ask you to travel to a particular location and complete a particular task in that location. Um, they may ask you to devote a book to them or a poem or a painting or essentially some creative project. Or they may ask you to embark on a whole new creative project as payment for a favor. Either way, whatever that payment is, the more friendly a spirit is to you, the easier it is gonna be for you to fulfill it. So essentially they're gonna give you this much in benefits and you're only gonna have to, and you're only gonna have to be this much in cost, if that makes sense. Of course, if you go to some of the lesser friendly spirits, including by the way, demons, and I'm not saying that, listen, it's, it's a free will universe. If that's your thing, you know, you do your thing. I personally don't recommend entering into any kind of contracts with demons um, because they always charge you triple and uh, you may not always get what you signed up for. Whereas if you're working with angelic beings, if you're working with deities, gods, goddesses, etc., they usually play fair as a general rule. There are tricksters, even in the god, you know, in the god, goddess arena. There are no, you know, not so much in the angelic realm. Angels don't really get to. Uh, that, that's not really how they act. They're not sly or deceptive by nature. So they're very honest. And so um, essentially working with them, most likely you're going to get a really, really good ratio of like give and take. So essentially go to the guides that um, you would, that are essentially, that like you and that are very prone to giving you a good deal. And so essentially you want to shop around a little bit and it can be push or pull. And what I mean by that is this, you may want a specific thing and you may already know what that thing is. And you may go and talk to your spirit guides and figure out who is the best person to deliver you that one thing. And then also talk to a couple of them and, and ask them, what is your payment? What would you require as payment for this thing? And then just pick the better deal. Or you may just have conversation with all of your primary spirit guides and be like, hey, I am on the market for favors uh, just because I am looking to get every advantage I can in this incarnation. What do you have available? What are you good at? What can you help me with? And each of the guides is going to tell you exactly what they can help you with. And if you find something that you like, ask them what the payment is and then figure out if you want to have a deal. Now, a couple of pro tips here is this. A sacred contract. So then essentially there is this, you're going to have to enter into a sacred contract. The way this works energetically, it's like a handshake. Um, essentially what I see when I enter into these types of contracts is it's a handshake, but it's a handshake where you're in, you're holding each other's each other by the wrist, essentially. So uh, it's a handshake. And then you would also have to sign on a dotted line. There's actually an actual contract in a meditative state that you have to sign. So there is a process and there is a method to this madness is what I'm saying. But here's the deal. You always have to, that's a pro tip that I promised you. <laughs> before I went on this tangent, you always have to write down every single sacred contract, every single favor that you're asking, and especially the payment in your own notes, in your journal or whatever you're taking notes, because you are going to forget. And that is not something you want to forget about because it creates a karmic knot like nothing else. So essentially, if you, let's say I'm entering into a sacred contract with Zeus, and Zeus is offering me something, and I promise something in return, the moment we enter into a sacred contract, Zeus is going to start on his end of the bargain. And by the way, spirit guides always fulfill on their end of the bargain. So if you accidentally forget that there is a sacred contract between the two of you, and you don't pay, you kind of receive the benefit. But it's the same thing as stealing, essentially, in a store, right? Like, you take the goods, you don't necessarily... Um, pay the cash. That is a really, really bad thing. It's not really looked upon favorably in the spirit world. So what would that, that would make a few things, a few problematic things happen. A, nobody's probably going to want to enter into a contract with you in this incarnation. So that's one, just not a great thing. A uh, spiritual contract that is. B, next time you're probably going to have to pay double, triple, or quadruple, because that's the other thing that you may want to uh, double check as you are signing into this contract. There's usually a clause around what happens if you don't fulfill your part of the bargain. This is something that can be negotiated as well. But before agreeing to a sacred contract, before binding yourself into it, please, please, please make sure that you can fulfill on your end of the bargain. 
In other words, whatever that being is asking for is not outside of your realm of possibility. You need to know in your heart of hearts that you can deliver on your end of the bargain and then stick to it. Otherwise, bad karma, not great karma. That's not how you want to create karma, right? So always make sure that you're writing down all the aspects of the sacred contracts because over your lifetime, you're going to, I mean, potentially if you use this technique, if you use this ability of yours, you could get a lot of help from spirit that is very structured help. But you also need to make sure that you are closing the loop on your end of the bargain. Now, of course, if you already paid something, if there's been payback, you can cross it out. But if it is something new uh, and you haven't paid, for instance, or you haven't really delivered on your end of the bargain, please make sure you don't forget. And that's why I say make notes because you're not going to be able to hold everything in your memory, especially if it like something is going to take years. I mean, again, the good news is if you enter into contracts with somebody who's very favorable to you, payback is very fast and it's, uh, very seamless. And um, the boon or the favor that you may receive in return can be quite spectacular and it can be very far reaching and really, really worth it. So yeah, so this is a very nifty trick. I usually, again, go easy at the beginning. I don't take any of these lightly. It's maybe not quite as serious getting into a marital, like a marriage contract here on earth, but it is still serious. And so you probably don't want to be running more than three to four of these contracts at any given point in time, because it is also your resource, right? You're using up your resource. Another thing I wanted to say, some of these things, like a part of the favor could be speeding things up in your life. And I always ask for clarity. So if you're um, talking to a spirit guide and you're like, hey, I am looking for uh, a particular outcome in my life. Very often, if it's a friendly spirit, they would tell you something along the lines of, you can get this outcome in 10 years. That is without my help, right? Like without the help of the spirit guide, they would give you a time of like, okay, in 10 years, you can achieve that which you want. But with a favor, I can help you get there instead of 10 years and three years, right? Or in two years or whatever the number is. And then it's up to you to decide whether this is sufficient for you and um, whether you are willing to play ball and take this as an acceleration or not, right? And then of course, there's going to be payment. What I'm saying is your spirit guides are still going to be working with a very amorphous, a very delayed gratification third dimensional world. Very often, they're still not going to be able to deliver something to you overnight. Um, there are beings that can do that. But a lot of light spirit guides, a lot of angelic spirit guides, their manifestation is going to be delayed just like yours. Now, do they have a lot more power than you do? Yes, they do. And that's why they're able to make things faster, better, maybe more uh, effective. But that doesn't mean that they can make it happen tomorrow, right? The good news is before you enter into any of these contracts, you are going to be able to find out upfront what is possible, what is doable, what is not possible. One of the contracts, I don't know if that's helpful, I can tell you, one of the contracts that I have entered standing right now, outstanding with a deity. And uh, this contract is around decision-making in business, actually. So um, she gave me a boon. She is a very friendly spirit to me, so I got away really easy. Uh, but essentially, we have a contract by which, for the duration of my life, every time I'm faced with a life-altering choice, She's going to come through as my intuition and she's never going to essentially uh, allow me or she's always going to ensure that I make the right call. Whether I have like three seconds to think about the decision or I have three years to think about a decision, right? Like whatever that means, essentially she's going to be helping me with decision making. And as payment, what we have agreed on is I have to travel to a particular location and, and uh, give her a one-time offering. But that location is in another country. And so that's essentially what our sacred contract looks like. Now, I will tell you, once I entered into that contract, you feel it. Like energetically, if you're a very receptive person, you know that now you owe, you owe it. The density around your body even shifts and you're like, ooh, I know it. Like, again, like it's not kind, it's not quite like marrying somebody because when you're, this contract is spiritual or energetic but it has real weight to it. And I know there's going to be consequence if I don't do what I said I was going to do, right? So again, please take this seriously. Please only enter into contracts with beings that you know mean you well. And if you are unsure, ask them. 
uh, ask them if they mean you well and why they're doing that. Very often with your primary spirit guides, though, I mean, your primary spirit guides, your secondary spirit guides, they're so vetted, like, it's not even funny. Like, nobody's going to let your primary guide be your primary guide if they don't mean well to you. But if you're just talking to some random entity um, that you have read about in a book and you're like, oh, this entity has power, let me reach out to them, then they may or may not be friendly uh, specifically towards you, right? So you're just always going to make sure that uh, these entities, whoever you're working with, these guides mean you well. Um, that's really, really important that you're not being charged double, triple, quadruple what you should be, right? So always look for a better deal. And by the way, you can negotiate up until you enter into that contract, you can, you can negotiate. Once you have entered into that contract, more often than not, you cannot negotiate. The only thing, right? God forbid something happens, you entered into a sacred contract and you can no longer fulfill your end of the bargain. You would go back to the same being. And you would tell them, you would ask them what else you can do instead of that other thing that you failed at or you can't complete. And then there could be a new contract. But please, you know, take this seriously. This is actually magic. I mean, this is high level magic. But like, this is like the hack of the system and it does work like magic. Uh, but you have to really uphold your end of the bargain and be really serious about it. And like I said, you probably don't want to be running the tab on these. That is like a very large tab. So be very deliberate with uh, with these contracts. With um, your primary spirit guides, that's probably where you would want to go. That's your probably number one stop around who to create these contracts with because those deals are going to be the most favorable. If you screw up, these uh, these beings are going to be a lot more accommod accommodating uh, than anybody else. And also, here's the thing about primary guides. If they're your primary guide in this life, most likely you have already been their primary guide and also you're going to be their primary guide in their future life. Uh, so it's in their best interest to not mess with you <laughs> because it's uh, the give and take in spirit world. All right, you guys. Actually, do let me know in the comments if you have already worked on boons of favors with any of the, you know, deities or spirit guides and what came out of it. I'm super curious. Um, again, this is not something that I hear a lot of people talk about. It is kind of like uncharted territory for a lot of people in spirituality. So just really glad I was able to share this today. I'm sending you a big virtual hug. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.